I just got back from shooting a wedding with this lens yesterday, and I need to talk about it. Let's go! The sexy matte black finished Tamron 17-70 f2.8 has got to be one of the best lens Tamron has ever made. This will be replacing my 18-105G lens, and I can finally say peace out to the f4 aperture. Now keep in mind I am a full-time videographer, so my opinion will be video centric. Here are three reasons why this lens is the best mid-zoom e-mount lens. No cap. Stabilization. This glass goes head to head with the Sony 16-55 f2.8 and the Sigma 18-50 f2.8. And the thing that those two lenses have in common is the lack of stabilization built in. From my experience, the more stability in my shots, the less work I would have to do in post. The Tamron 17-70 has VC, which stands for Vibration Control, and it's Tamron's version of stabilization. Even though I'm using a camera body that already has stabilization in it, the Sony a6500. When combined with the Tamron, the shots look flawlessly smoother, especially for this wedding shoot where I was just aiming for cinematic movements for every single shot. There are just things you don't want to worry about when you're shooting something like a wedding. Everything is so fast paced so whenever possible, I only want to focus on pushing the record button and getting my movement and framing right. I had the 17-70 on my Weebill S gimbal the entire time while my second gimbal with my backup a6500 was swapped swapping between the ultra-wide lens, telephoto lens, and portrait lens for low-light situations. Now before I continue to the next two, let's grow this channel together. Subscribe and like if you found this helpful. Range. This is the Steph Curry out of the three lens because this baby's got range, honey. Let's face it, we don't have all the time to swap lens and rebalance the gimbal during every shoot. So that's why I hold longer zoom range at such a high value. During this wedding, I was able to do mid shots with ease and even the detailed shots were crispy clean. The minimum focus distance is 19 centimeters. Side note, I'm in a few e-mount crop from communities on Facebook and there have always been mentions of this lens losing its sharpness after 55 millimeters. But they might just be referring to photos and they might be pixel peepers too. When I had it punched in all the way to 70, the quality of footage was still just as sharp and clear. So there were no problems for me. Autofocus. My worries about autofocus has always been about focus breathing and having it latch onto things and faces that I didn't want. I've experienced lens that just couldn't decide, especially during moments when you want to shoot through something in the foreground. I don't know if it's because I bought this lens brand new, but it seems to be so confident in choosing the right subject in the frame and 95% of the time it chose the right thing. Once again, we need to worry less when we're shooting in a fast paced environment. We need to have that trust in the tools we're using. So for video shooters out there, this is the one. I noticed that a lot of people who review this lens comes from the perspective of a YouTuber, vlogger, so I can see why they highly prioritize compact and lightweight. The Tamron being the largest and heaviest out of three comparisons can actually be seen as an advantage for videographers, especially for handheld shooting. I mean, I can see the value in lightweight for vloggers and travel YouTubers, but this lens can still balance on my old gimbal with a max weight of 3.4 pounds. I'm just gonna add that you gotta be mindful when watching YouTube reviews on lens because influential person with a lot of subscribers will persuade you to care about specs that us working videographers shouldn't even find necessary. Now tell me this, if you could only choose one lens to use for the rest of your life, which one would it be? Leave it in the comments.